So you're thinking about moving to Durango, Colorado, but you're not exactly sure which part of Durango you wanna to move to. Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you one of Durango's best kept secrets, an area that's right outside of Durango called Mancus, Colorado. We are just west of Durango by about 29 minutes, and I'm gonna dig into all the good, bad, the ugly, everything you guys wanna know about this area. So I'm gonna show you the distance to a lot of different things and dive into a little bit more of comparison from here to Bayfield, which is kind of the town east of Durango, and then do a lot of comparison to Durango as well. What I find is I have clients calling me after watching my YouTube channel saying, we're not too sure about the price points of Durango, can we get properties a little bit cheaper, even if we live a little bit outside of Durango? And so that's what a little bit of this video is going to be about, really shedding light on this community and showing you what it has to offer. So we're going to talk about proximity to things, proximity to the lakes, to the fishing, to the biking, um, to the grocery stores. Uh, we're going to go in the grocery store, show you what it's like because it's a little bit smaller and show you a lot of different biking trails, hiking trails, uh, what the community has to offer, what it doesn't have to offer because it's a lot smaller than Durango. And we're jumping into it right now. All right, so let's start with the proximity to a few different towns. So in Mancus here, we are 29 minutes to Durango. Then we're 21 minutes to Dolores and 20 minutes to Cortez. So those are gonna come into play a little bit later in the video uh, when I talk about some amenities that they offer that Mancus doesn't offer. Uh, Dolores and Cortez are basically northwest of Mancus. And then Durango is basically straight east of Mancus. So Mancus is known as the gateway to Mesa Verde National Park. Really incredible national park. It is about nine minutes away from Mancus. So really, really close. Mancus sits on forest and desert, kind of right in the middle of forest and desert. So up to the north of us, we've got the San Juan Mountains. And then the desert is kind of to the west and the south, and Durango is to the east, like I mentioned a minute ago. So that kind of gives you some context of where we're at. I'm a licensed realtor here in Durango, Mancus, and Bayfield, Colorado. Love to help you with any of your real estate needs. As I mentioned in other videos, we're more than happy to get the drone up in the air, give you a personalized video tour of a specific area, of multiple areas, give you walkthrough videos of properties that you're looking at, really go above and beyond, kind of give you that concierge service we really pride ourselves on. And we're more than happy to hop on a map tour, really discuss with you your specific needs and wants regarding places like Mancus, Bayfield, areas in between Durango, and just see if we can find you exactly what you're looking for. It's kind of a diverse area here. So going up to the north, you've just got the mountains, and as properties go up in elevation, you're gonna get a lot more snow. So I mentioned this in a lot of my videos in Durango. And then as you come down a little bit, as you keep going east towards Cortez and Dolores, you're gonna need a little bit less snow as the elevation comes down. So Mancus has a really small downtown, but I will say that people are very, very friendly here. Um, I think that's something that you really wanna know. It's tough to know unless you really visit here and get a feel for it yourself. Uh, when I was just walking downtown shooting a video here, people were saying hi, waving, just within the first 30 seconds of me walking downtown. Uh, I do think that's very similar in Durango personally, but this is a much smaller town, so you kind of get more of that small town feel here. Uh, you're going to kind of find that it's a little bit, little bit of that artsy town, and they've got some great restaurants here, but nothing compared to Durango just because there's not nearly as many. Right behind me, you see that red sign is Fence Line Cidery. So we'll tell you a little bit more about that later in the video. But my family and came, my family and I love to come up here. Great cidery, and they've got they're really well known throughout the Southwest. Uh, their cider is in a lot of different uh, liquor stores and restaurants all throughout Durango and throughout Bayfield, throughout the other towns around Durango. Now I want to read a few quotes from people that I spoke to about Manka specifically. So they were addressing the road into Mancus, Highway 160. So they were saying Highway 160 is relatively benign, no pass to go over, not much snow in the winter. Um, it definitely does, just from my perspective, it definitely does get some snow, but they're really comparing it to areas in Durango where the elevation is quite a bit higher, like north of Durango. Um, there was a story, a really sad story, where a snow uh, snow plow actually went over the side of the road because of an avalanche. So this area compared to up north of Durango, we just don't get those avalanches. We don't have a lot of those issues on the road here, on the road into and out of Mancus. 
in comparison. So just a lot safer driving overall because it's a lot, quite a bit flatter here. Cortez is also close town to get medical care uh, beyond what is provided in the rural clinic of Mancus. So again, Cortez is 20 minutes away from here. So great place to uh, go to Walmart, Safeway, bigger medical clinic. And Durango has quite a bit, quite a bit bigger medical clinic as well, Mercy Regional Hospital. And so you're approximately, so you're 29 minutes to Durango, and then Mercy is about another 10 minutes east of Durango on the way to Bayfield. So two great options there uh, as far as medical goes. Uh, the elevation here is 7,028, and the population is just over 1,000 people at about 1,221. So really small population, but again, keep in mind, a lot of people are living here and still commuting to Durango because you're only that 29 minutes away from Durango. And a lot of people are moving here for the outdoors. So just the outdoor amenities here are just about next to none. Um, again, like I mentioned, north of us is all the San Juan Mountains. So we've got a ton of different trails right out your back door from Mancus, and then some trails even right in town. All right, now before I dive into really my favorite part of any of these videos, just talking about the outdoors, the trails, the fishing, etc., I wanna talk about the reason that a lot of people move here in comparison to Durango. And a lot of people are giving me a call really asking these specific questions. So a big question is really talking to me about the difference in real estate prices. So I'm just gonna break those prices down. So La Plata County median home price, which is the county that Durango is in, it's gonna be 660, 450, 660,000. And so that was the median home price in 2023. Then compared to Montezuma County, which is where we're at right now, uh, which covers Mancus, Cortez, and Dolores, and a few other small, really small towns, was 366,000. So quite a bit lower, almost 300,000 lower. Um, so really important information there that you guys wanna just keep in mind. You know, the other alternative is looking at Bayfield. You're closer to that 20, 25 minute range if you're kind of on the edge of Bayfield, closer to Durango. And the travel distance or the travel as far as weather goes is fairly similar, I would say, as far as the road being flat. Um, both roads are going to have that risk of wildlife. There's tons of deer, elk on the road uh, that you just really wanna watch out for. And that is definitely one of the cons that a lot of my friends have shared with me that are living in Mancus or Bayfield. So still similar on both of those fronts. But then as we dive into um, just a little bit more details about the real estate, there is the home prices range from about 400,000 to 2.75 million in Mancus. And there's not many homes on the market. So I just kind of wanted to give you that snapshot first. And then when we're done with this actual tour of Mancus, then we'll hop into my office, kind of give you a map tour, show you some properties and really compare. I've got them all on my notes right here. So make sure to hang on to the end so that we can show you that. By the way, guys, that's why you gotta reach out to me. I'm a licensed realtor here in Durango, Mancus and Bayfield, Colorado. Love to help you with any of your real estate needs. As I mentioned in other videos, we're more than happy to get the drone up in the air, give you a personalized video tour of a specific area, of multiple areas, give you walkthrough videos of properties that you're looking at, really go above and beyond, kind of give you that concierge service we really pride ourselves on. And we're more than happy to hop on a map tour, really discuss with you your specific needs and wants regarding places like Mancus, Bayfield, areas in between Durango, and just see if we can find you exactly what you're looking for. All right, now let's jump into the rest of the video. So I'm gonna talk amenities now. So Mancus does have a local grocery store. And actually, while I'm thinking about it, let's hop over there right now and then come back here. All right, now, unless you count a really nice, well-stocked health food store, Mancus really only has one grocery store in town and it's fairly small. So out of 125 reviews, they have a 4.6 star average on Google. So really good reviews. A lot of people have some really great things to say about this grocery store. But I will mention it is fairly small. It really kind of meets your basic needs. It's not gonna have a lot of different things that you might find at Whole Foods or natural grocers or places like that. Now keep in mind, you're only 20 minutes from Cortez up the road, west of us a little ways. They have Safeway, Walmart Supercenter, as well as City Market. City Market is the same grocery store that we have in Durango as well for comparison. So as another little comparison for you, in Bayfield, you have a really small, very similar size grocery store. Bayfield is, 
the community that is about 30 minutes east of Durango. So in comparison to the two towns that are close to Durango, Mancus is going to be closer to another town, Cortez, that has a Walmart Supercenter and those other grocery stores. So just want to point that out as a good comparison for you. While we're talking about grocery stores, I also want to mention they do have a family dollar here just up the road and they do have a pretty decent selection of food as well. Um, it's kind of what you expect from a family dollar, show you a few videos of what they've got, um, but there's another good option as well. All right, we are back. Feel free to throw in the comments what you thought of the grocery store. Were you hoping for a lot more? What do you think of that kind of travel distance to Cortez and Durango? Do you think that might work for you? Throw in the comments or even shoot me a text. Um, love to hear your thoughts, your comments, and other things that you would like me to cover. Would you like more videos, more info on the grocery store and some of those amenities? And now let's dive into other amenities. Uh, so we've got Zuma Natural Foods. Uh, they're a really cool natural food store. And what I love about it is you don't have to go up to Dur Durango, uh, a bigger town, to get those great natural foods. Uh, those great health foods. And then you got Fahrenheit coffee roasters. Guys, they had 204 reviews on Google, 4.6 star average. And then back up to Zuma Natural Foods, they had a 4.6 star average with 151 reviews as well. So those guys are both really highly rated, a lot of good reviews about them. Again, what I just mentioned, Fenceline Cidery right behind me. Uh, my parents, my wife and I came up here a couple summers ago, really love Fenceline Cidery. Really cool spot to hang out. You can throw darts in there. Um, they've got some great games you can play and they're right on the river too. So really cool spot. Where I'm standing right here, there's a little park area and then across the street from us, from where I'm standing here, there's a nice park um, that you can take your kids to, swing set, big, huge grass area as well. You can play soccer, play baseball. So we really do have a lot to offer in this community as far as a really small town. It's something that I've been pretty impressed with. Uh, then, as far as other things, we've got Outlier Cellars. They're a winery and cidery. And then Mancus State Park. We're going to hop over there and I'm going to show you Mancus State Park. So I'm not going to hit on that much right now. But I'm going to talk about the airport. So Cortez Airport. I've spoken about this in past videos in detail. And I've actually interviewed my parents. There's a video where I talk about retiring in Durango. Interview my parents and they talk about how a lot of the times they actually come up to Cortez to come to this airport instead of the La Plata County Airport. So feel free to check out that video to get a lot more details. Um, but the Cortez Airport is 28 minutes from Mancus, from where I'm standing right now. And just like I mentioned, uh, for a lot more details, go to that video on retiring in Durango. And uh, my parents will tell you kind of their experience with that, but they have found a lot better luck flying out of the Cortez Airport. And then again, Mesa Verde, about nine minutes away. We will show you that in a minute as well. Manco State Park. Uh, there are 32 campsites. What I found really cool is there's also two yurts as well as six campsites approximately that are open in the winter, that they're actually snow plowing and making available in the winter. So that's pretty sweet. You don't hear about that very often. And then distances to things. So we've got Telluride, which is about an hour 35 away and Purgatory, about 58 minutes away from here. So two awesome, incredible skiing destinations. I mean, Telluride, known as one of the top skiing destinations in the country, is only an hour, 35 minutes away from here. And what's nice is you're not really going through any big passes. You are going through one spot that's a little bit iffy. You really wanna watch the weather. Um, Colorado Trip Planner, there's some great apps that you can look. You can see cameras that are showing you the roads. Um, get an idea of what the roads are looking like. That's a good resource for you guys. Uh, and then Canyonlands is actually only two hours and 11 minutes away. I went out there with our church uh, a couple summers ago and it was an awesome experience. Actually, I'll mention, we didn't go in the summer, we went, we went in the spring because the summer is super hot. So get out there in the spring, highly recommend getting out to Canyonlands out in Utah. But <clears throat> But that's what's cool about living here in Mancus as compared to Durango, just getting out further this way, further west, is you're a lot closer to the desert, to areas like Canyonlands, you're closer to the Four Corners. Something I wanted to mention too is when I was driving back from California, um, I stopped in the Four Corners area and it was just stunning, guys. I was coming through at like midnight and the skies were incredible. 
just lit up with stars, the Milky Way. Uh, I used to be in the Navy, and so I was actually able to see, I felt like the sky was super similar to what it was like when I was in the middle of the ocean with an incredible dark sky, and I was just seeing shooting stars going across all the time. So that is a huge value of living in such a small town, a small area with no big lights and light pollution. All right, we are right outside of Fence Line Cidery. Check out this spot. And I wanna show you, it's right on the river. Gorgeous, huh? Love it. And so I was actually talking right over there a minute ago, and I'm gonna bring you over here. They've actually got a food truck right outside. Check this out, really good menu. We had some food here uh, last summer with my family. Some really nice spots to sit outside of. We're shooting this in the spring, so trees aren't bloomed yet, but um, really gorgeous spot right over the river. And again, really awesome cidery, award-winning cider, great environment, fun spot, definitely worth checking out. Now, a few other things I want to mention about Fence Line Cidery, they do have a happy hour. It's from about 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Right when they open, it starts till about 4 p.m. And then another thing I want to mention is, like I just said, we're right on the river here. Really cool spot to actually be able to sit, enjoy a drink, enjoy a meal on the river. Compared to Durango, there is actually only about one spot where you can enjoy a beer and a meal on the river, on the Animus River Trail, which is at the Double Tree by Hilton, the River Cafe there. Uh, in the spring, the fall, and the, in the summer, of course, they open it up, open up their kind of beer garden that's right on the river trail. But other than that, we don't have a bunch of restaurants right on the river, uh, whereas they do have this one spot, and it's an awesome spot to actually come enjoy a drink on the river. So keep that in mind if you really enjoy eating, drinking, hanging out by the river. So I was saying earlier, I'm gonna go over to Mancus State Park to shoot the rest of the video over there, kind of show you some of what it's like over there. But it was really windy over there when I set up my camera. So I'm coming over here to shoot the rest of the video. And we're actually gonna talk about the weather. So let's talk about the winter. It starts in kind of December as far as the snow goes. Um, Mid-December to late December, you're really gonna get the first real snow. It might snow a little bit before then. Um, in comparison to Durango, it is pretty similar as far as the amount of snowfall and the temperatures over here compared to over there. Uh, so let's dive into actual number 66.9 inches of annual snowfall where it's 70, 67 inches in Durango, almost identical. Um, and that is in the town of Mancus. So keep in mind as you're going north, um, from Mancus, from the town of Mancus, it does climb in elevation. So you're gonna get more snow as it climbs in elevation. So you wanna look up what the elevation is of the home you're looking at, unless you can see that it's really close to town. Again, reach out to me. I'm happy to provide you with all that kind of info as far as elevation of those homes, how much snow it's gonna get, what those roads are like, and again, provide you with a property tour. So you have a real good feel, how much snow am I gonna be plowing? What's the maintenance gonna be looking like? Because it is gonna really vary based on where the property is at. I always wanna emphasize that in a lot of these videos where I'm talking about properties and elevation. Um, January is gonna be a high of 40 and a low of 14 in comparison to Durango, high of 39. So again, really similar. Um, it's gonna hit just under zero for just a few weeks um, in the night. It's not gonna be during the day, so you're not gonna have these really harsh temperatures like you see in areas like Montana, South Dakota, Canada, these states higher up in the US. So again, when you're comparing mountain towns, which I get a lot of calls from people comparing mountain towns, um, even in Montana, South Dakota, other places in Colorado, a lot of these places in Colorado, and I just did a video on the weather, so be sure to check that out. But back to what I was saying, a lot of these mountain towns in Colorado, almost every single one of them, get a lot lower temperatures than us and a lot more snow. So if you wanna be in a town and in a climate where you have access to incredible skiing like Telluride, Purgatory, you've got some great cross country skiing, great backcountry skiing, great snowshoeing, this is an incredible place because you still don't get those really low um, temperatures in the winter and you don't get as much snow as a lot of these other mountain towns. Another benefit to that is your spring in the spring, you're not gonna have as long of a mud season. So a lot of people don't think of this, but all that snow melting, all these trails are gonna have a ton of mud in the spring. 
and it's going to be the same in these other mountain towns, but a lot longer mud season in these other mountain towns. We're going to be out on the trails mountain biking a lot sooner than those other uh, mountain towns. So I just want to do that quick deep dive as far as a comparison for you guys um, regarding that, because I think a lot of you are probably looking at several different mountain towns, or that at least that's what it seems like when people call me um, when watching these videos. So in February, March, and some of April, it's kind of that muddy season, just to pinpoint when that is. Then in April, the high is 61, and the low is going to be 28. In July, we're going to have a high of 85, a low of 52. And then in Durango, it's going to be a high of 87. So as you see up higher in elevation, you're getting about 2 degrees cooler over here. And it's going to be the same in Durango when you buy a home at similar elevation to Mancus. So in Mancus, we're just above 7,000 feet. It's a lot of subdivisions in Durango and around Durango that are at that elevation. So if you're kind of really liking that little bit cooler temperature in the summer, keep that in mind. October is going to be a high of 64. Then in the summer, it's going to get into the 80s for about two weeks or so, kind of the high mid to high 80s. Now, while I'm touching on this, I always want to mention, I've got a lot of clients that are talking to me, sending me properties and saying, hey, this doesn't have AC. Why doesn't this home have AC? And this is at 1.5 million. So a lot of the times, what I really want you to be cognizant of is if this home doesn't have, or if it does have radiant floor heating that you're looking at and it doesn't have AC, it's really hard to put AC in because it doesn't have that duct work. Um, you're gonna see a lot of homes without AC, even at luxury price points, because just the temperatures aren't hitting much above the 80s, even for a couple of weeks, like I just mentioned. So again, when you're looking, look for homes that have central forced air, and then you could add in AC for not too crazy of a price. Now, I think Colorado as a whole, or Southwest Colorado as a whole, has about 300 days of sunshine. Checking on Mancus itself, it has about 250 days of sunshine throughout the year. Then outdoor activities. Let's dive into that. This is one of my favorite things to talk about. So we've got Mancus State Park, just like I brought up. Really beautiful lake. I've got some uh, video of it iced over right now. It's still iced over, unfortunately. Um, but in the spring, summer, and fall, um, you can canoe, you can kayak, you can do wakeless power boating. Then you've got McPhee Reservoir. It's the second largest lake in Colorado. Um, the fish in there include walleye, smallmouth bass, largemouth bass, rainbow trout, carpy, uh, northern pike, perch, and kokanee salmon. So really diverse range of fish in there. Then you've got some great fishing on the Dolores River. My dad and I love fishing up there. We haven't been up there in a little while, but phenomenal fishing on the Dolores River. The Bear Creek, Bear Creek is amazing. as And Summit Reservoir. And then there's many others within a little further drive. So I've brought this up before, but a friend of mine was telling me, him and a friend of his really have the opinion that this area, Durango, Mancus, kind of the Southwest um, area of Colorado is the best area in the country or at least Colorado for fishing. Just all the different tributaries, all the different rivers, the different alpine lakes, we're within an hour of the San Juan River, which people come here from all over the world to fish the San Juan River. I was just out there with some friends catching a bunch of fish. There's a ton of fish in there that are 20 inches and over. I highly recommend you guys reach out to Duranglers if you're at all interested in fly fishing. Have them take you on a guided trip out there. My dad and I went out there for the first time when I was, I think, 13 or 14 and we just got skunked. We didn't catch anything for three days. We stayed out there. We stayed at the Soaring Eagle Lodge and it just really stinks, right? When you get skunked for three days straight fishing for 10 hours a day, it's rough. So the next season, my dad hired a guide and we caught, I don't know, 15, 20 fish each day. Um, so that's my quick tip on the San Juan. I'm going to do a video in the future with Andy over at Duranglers, and we're going to talk all about details of fishing, where to live if you want great fishing access out your back door, get into details with fishing in this area. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like this video so that way, and turn on your notifications so that way you see when these videos pop up. Anyway, the other river, it's going to be the Animus River that's flowing right through Durango. Incredible river, really good fishery. Um, they stocked it last fall. We went and fished it. When they stocked it, caught a bunch. Um, I floated that river as well. Really, really good river to float. And then to paddleboard, there's some really great sections to paddleboard that river. 
Um, and again, like I mentioned, some great alpine lakes um, going up north of Durango, bunch of really cool alpine lakes. There's a bunch of great lakes that you can hike into. The Pine River is incredible. It's just north of Viacito Lake. I love fishing the Pine River. It's a small hike to get into the water because you're kind of hiking above the water. Then you come down, but it's a really long river. Um, and then you can hike into some 14ers on that same trail. So you can kind of do a hike fish uh, trip as well. All right, let's talk biking real quick. So Phil's World. Phil's World is 14 minutes from Mancos. That is probably one of the big benefits of living here. A lot of people from Durango drive up there constantly because Phil's World is awesome. 46 miles of intermediate trails. I absolutely love biking Phil's World. Uh, it's rated number three in Colorado, guys. Out of tons and tons of trails that we have in Colorado, even tons of trails that we have just in Durango, uh, rated number nine overall on the Biking Project's website. Then keep in mind, uh, e-bikes and dogs are not allowed on this trail. Uh, then Manka State Park has some great trails as well. Uh, one of the reviews was fun rolling trail through Ponderosa Pine Forest. Then I'm gonna list off some other trails. So there's Even Flow, Manka Spur Trail, um, Silver Mountain Extravaganza. And then Bogey Draw is a really popular one as well. And then we've got some great trails down in Farmington as well. Um, definitely recommend looking up the Biking Project. There's some other great apps as well, but that's one that I really like to use. Um, what's cool about it too, is if you download it, you and you don't have reception, you can see where you're at on the trail. Okay, now gyms, guys, especially in the winter, you want access to a gym. They do have a pretty solid gym here in Mancos, as well as Bayfield. While I'm talking about small towns, I wanna bring in Bayfield into the picture a little bit. Uh, Momentum 24-7. What's great about this gym is, like it says in the name, you have access 24-7. They've got 4.8 stars out of 15 Google reviews. Um, pretty solid gym. It's not a huge gym. It's not going to have a ton of powerlifting stuff, but it's going to have just about everything you need. Um, so it's going to have power racks. It's going to have good barbells. It's going to have good dumbbells. Um, going to have a good amount of space as well. So definitely reach out to me if you have any more specific questions on the gym itself. I didn't have a chance to get down there and actually get some video footage of it. Um, but I'm going to do that in the future. I already have that on my calendar to get that done for a future video. Now, another thing about me is a lot of these properties are bigger acreage properties. If you're really looking for something more uh, bigger acreage and you want to get as much bang for your buck, this is a great place to look, um, especially if you're looking for a little bit flatter land. I mean, it's definitely, you can see behind me, it's not all flatter land, but you're gonna find a little bit more flatter land out this way, as well as out towards Bayfield, because when you're in Durango going north, you've just got mountains all over the place. So it gets trickier out there. All right, so there are 16 homes on the market. Again, like I told you guys, a very small town, 16 homes on the market, and this is all only single family detached homes that I was pulling. All but one are half an acre or bigger, and then all but four of them are an acre or bigger. So as you can see, good majority are on pretty decent lot sizes. To paint a better picture for you, let's hop into my office, hop on Google Earth, hop on realtor.com, kind of compare and contrast a couple different listings, one here in Mancos and one here, one there out in Durango. So you can kind of see the differences in price point and build and what they look like. And then we can kind of compare and contrast the topography, really show you what it looks like on Google Earth out here. And let's hop over there now. Hi guys, we are in my office and we're gonna hop onto realtor.com. I really like using realtor.com because it's really user friendly. And so I pulled up a couple properties. We're gonna start here with the map. So I show you where we're at first. And we're gonna start in La Plata County, look at a Durango property first, then compare it to a Mancos property. Actually, I was on the wrong one. Here we go. Here is Durango. Let's zoom out here, show you where we're at. With this property is right off of Highway 160 and just south of town, just across the highway from Three Springs. Let's wait for this to process. There we go. So Three Springs is right here. Town of Durango's here. Mancus is over, let's zoom out a little bit, over this way, off to, off to the west. Um, again, about a 29 minute drive to Durango. And so now let's zoom in here. Right off of 160, so the first negative of this property, they're going to hear some traffic. Um, they're backed up a little bit, so not as much, not a crazy amount. 
Let's go satellite view so you can kind of see the topography a little bit. Let's see here. So you can kind of tell pretty flat, actually fairly similar terrain. And that's partly why I chose this property to show you. So we're 29010 Highway 160. Now let's go look at the property. Really nicely updated property. Start with the stats. This is 950, four bed, three bath, just under 2,500 square feet at half an acre, just over half an acre. And so let's just start with the exterior, kind of get an idea of views. You got some gorgeous La Plata mountain views off, um, off the home, off these decks, off the backyard. You can see a nice little wraparound deck here, nice size yard. There's those views, nice drone shot. So you see the highway, um, good roof. And then let's take a quick look at the bedrooms. Really updated, nice bedrooms, nice carpet, um, kitchen, pretty nice kitchen, updated, granite, newer appliances, fairly open concept as you can see here. Um, bathrooms, let's just see how updated these are just for, again, a comparison and living room. You've got a nice updated living room, nice floors, um, really nice property overall. And then what's cool too is they've got a, another room here. Yeah, with a little kitchen here. So kind of an in-law quarters that you could have as well. So really nice bonus here. So again, about 2,500 square feet, four bed, three bath, half an acre. It was on the market for about 41 days at a price of 384 a square foot. So if you're the analytical type, hopefully that helps you. Hopefully this isn't too much information if you're not, but just hang in there with me and we're gonna compare. So now we are in Mancus. Here's Mancus right here, Cortez off to this side, and up here is Dolores. And I already chose a property because I was looking for one that was very similar price point. And let's go look at the property now, 998. It's been on the market for 11 days. Uh, 4456 square feet guys so this is almost double the size of the other home for about the same price about 50 48 grand more to be exact six bed four and a half bed and seven acres so let's start by looking at the outside they've got some phenomenal views as well so views were really comparable this terrain is actually really comparable as well very similar you're not tucked in the mountains there you're flatter um, you know, you might say this is a little dated, but I would still say it has some pretty nice updates. It's not uh, for mica counters. If we just talk about quality of counters and cabinets. Again, really nice views, open concept. So fairly similar type of home in the sense of open concept, nothing too funky about it. And updated bathrooms, again, updated bedrooms, really nicely staged. Looks like a very beautiful home. Uh, so I just want to, again, show you this comparison and just in your mind, be comparing these two properties. Look at these gorgeous views. This is ridiculous. Super amazing. Uh, sunsets. I want to touch on this real quick. That part of Durango, I'll go back to this home right here. This part of Durango gets great sunsets. Most other parts, you really aren't going to see sunsets very much. Let me zoom out so you know where I'm talking about. So again, this is the southeast part of Durango, down here by Three Springs off I-160. All of this area, this is called the Mesa. You're going to get great sunsets um, in this area too. But once you get up east, you're just tucked in the forest. You're not going to see much up here. You're not going to see much. This is where I live, up in the Animus Valley. And then out west, some of this you will see good sunsets. But great comparison to this home because they've got some great sunsets. Big open skies. So again, to just compare, you're getting almost double the square footage with this home in Mancus. You're getting seven acres more, well, 6.5 acres more out here, two more bedrooms. And it's fairly similar as far as updates. Still got that two bedrooms or two car garage, I mean. And dirt driveway, uh, you're a little further out and you're of course further out from amenities. You're further from Durango, 49 minutes from Durango. If you're just comparing Durango distance, the other one is 11 minutes from downtown from the same address. 
So guys, let's hop back over to the other video. I hope that really helped you out as far as comparing real estate. And then I wanna to touch on something I didn't earlier. Um, this is known as a really great place to live if you have horses. Really good amount of trails, places to ride horses. Um, not a lot of restrictions either. Not a ton of HOAs that don't let you have horses. Really open, really friendly to that. Um, you'll even see people riding their horses right downtown to go shopping, like it's pretty crazy. Um, you don't see that much in Durango. So there's kind of that culture around having livestock, having animals, having chickens, just even if you just want chickens, um, want some goats, that kind of thing. Very open, much easier with the HOAs or the lack of HOAs, I should say. Then I want to touch on building a little bit as well. So if you're thinking about building here versus Durango, much lower cost, especially when we talk about the permit process, much easier to get a permit to build here compared to Durango not as long of times to wait. Um, and of course, I don't want to guarantee that because I don't know the, you know, exactly where you're going to fall in line and things like that. But it's just a less stringent process, I would say, out this way compared to Durango. Uh, and then again, I just want to circle back and say, you're still within that 30 minute bubble of Durango. Now, a lot of people that call me up really want to be in that 20 minute range. But if you really want to see those prices drop, those home prices drop, you get outside that 20 minute bubble of downtown Durango and you start seeing those home prices come down. And I would say you're really not sacrificing much when it comes to the outdoor world. If you're here for outdoors, you really wanna be biking, hiking, kayaking, rafting, all that fun stuff. You're really not missing much out this way. Um, there are, depending on where you're at out this way, you're not gonna necessarily have trails right out your back door, but it also depends on where you're at because I was just talking to a client about a property that was right on a lake out here in Mancus. And there's really not many homes that are right on lakes in Durango. You know, we've got uh, Lake Nighthorse. There's really no homes that are right on it. There are a few with views. Um, but again, for that comparison, there's some homes on Viacito Lake out in Bayfield. But for one that's way higher elevation, you're gonna get a ton more snow. And the roads are really tough to drive on. So it's just very different compared to if you want to be on a lake out here, it is possible to get out here with a decent price range, you know, in a reasonable price range, I should say. So another little comparison for you out here. Okay, so I love to do these comparisons and just compare the nuanced things from this area to Durango, to Bayfield, to Ignacio, really compare these kind of little micro uh, markets, if you will. So guys, that's why you gotta reach out to me. Give me a call, text, email, days, nights, weekends. I've got your back when it comes to moving here to Southwest Colorado in this area. Again, would love to put the drone up in the air, give you a property tour, or even like a subdivision slash area tour if you don't see the videos that you're looking for. I'm also more than happy to go through the property, any properties you're seeing, give you a real good video tour, walk you through, open up cabinets, open up doors, give you a real good feel of what you're looking at. Just did that for a client the other day. They were really happy with the video, made the offer on the first home we walked through. Um, guys, leave me a comment below where you're from. I'd love to hear so that I can kind of try to tailor these videos to what you're looking for. Um, and please subscribe, like this video, and I'm looking forward to seeing you guys on the next one. Hey guys, so I was packing up my stuff, totally forgot to mention that we've got a really nice outdoor pool with a nice slide. I think it was like 124 foot slide over in Cortez. So again, 20 minutes away from Mancus here, really nice outdoor pool. Of course, only open in the summer, so not a really long season because of the cold that we get, but definitely worth keeping in mind. Another big benefit of moving here versus Durango and, uh, and other areas, even like Bayfield.